I want to thank you all for joining our virtual listening tour today. As many of you know, we've had presidents, board members, and volunteers literally going around the world speaking to our members through the listening tour. To date, we've made 71 stops in 42 cities and have reached out to almost 3,500 members. As we've done in the past, we'd like to make this virtual listening tour available to people um, that aren't able to get to our live presentations. So here's your chance to see it from your office, home, or your computer screen. I'd like to begin by introducing myself. I'm Jerry Brown. I'm, I've had the honor for the last uh, almost year now to serve as president of the Society of Actuaries. Uh, I retired from working life two years ago where I was uh, executive vice president and chief actuary of Mutual of America for 18 years prior to that. I, uh, I've been an active education volunteer since I became a fellow in 1980. Uh, I particularly enjoyed working on the uh, fellowship admission course as, as course director. And I'm particularly looking forward to my role in the coming year as, pres as past president. Uh, Mike, why don't you take a minute and introduce yourself. Well, thank you, Jerry. Um, I'm Mike Lombardi. I'm president-elect of the Society of Actuaries. Uh, I have my own actuarial consult consulting firm, MLBC, which advises insurance companies on business strategy, M&A, reinsurance, and corporate actuarial challenges. I became an FSA in 1981, and uh, since that time I've worked in insurance companies, consulting firms, and reinsurance companies, primarily Prudential Assurance, uh, Willis Towers Watson, and RGA. I've been a member or chair of uh, numerous committees of the uh, Society of Actuaries, the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, the American Academy of Actuaries, and the International Actuarial Association. Uh, I've served on the board before. Uh, I was vice president of the SOA on the SOA board in 2005 to 2007, and I was president of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries in 2003 to 2004. And I'm delighted to be here joining you all, at least virtually, on this virtual listening tour. Jerry? Thanks, Mike. Uh, our goal today is not so much to speak at you, but to share, uh, share some thoughts of the future directions of the SOA, our current and future initiatives, and then get a chance to uh, start a two-way dialogue where we'll hear uh, and, and answer your questions. You are valued members of the SOA, and, and I tell you, we, take a, we sincerely appreciate your, your thoughts and comments, and they do help us as we form our uh, future initiatives and our, and our current initiatives. Uh, throughout, the, the conver throughout the presentation, you'll have an opportunity to enter questions in the dialogue box, and uh, Mike and I will answer those as best we can following our prepared remarks. <clears throat> if you do have a question that you're uncomfortable even from the anonymity of your own computer asking, uh, feel free to reach out to Mike or I directly, either by phone or email, or you can contact uh, the SOA at listeningtours at soa.org. Hopefully most of you have, have seen this document uh, at some point in the past year or two. But in case you have not, uh, I'm going to take a minute to just walk you through our strategic plan. <coughs> this, the, this, the strategic plan was approved by our board in October, uh, coincident with uh, my coming on board as president. So it's very exciting for me to have sort of a, a new document to direct our strategy as we, as we proceeded. It really has been our guide uh, over the last year and will be in the coming several years as we formulate initiatives and strategies to accomplish our mission. The slide has a lot of text on it and uh, you probably can't read it on your screen, but I will uh, tell you it's available at our website. If you go to the website and, and search around for it, I'm sure you'll find a copy of our strategic plan. Using the plan, the SOA really will uh, advance the actuarial profession. That's our mission helping actuaries become trusted, in-demand professionals to develop and communicate uh, solutions to complex business and financial problems. As an organization, we'll be making decisions based on this, on this strategic plan. To fulfill our mission and our vision, which I'll talk about next, we built the plan to meet the following three goals. We really want to ensure that actuaries stay at the forefront of evolving methods for solving complex business problems. We do want to expand the, 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 the profession's influence and knowledge and inform our stakeholders really to, through better understanding of key societal issues through, um, through objective and trusted uh, actuarial research. We also want to help actuaries get relevant, uh, relevant perspectives and knowledge <clears throat> so they can really anticipate and solve global challenges as well. To achieve these objectives, the SOA is committed 
to implementing the initiatives to allow us to identify, analyze, and prioritize changing environments in which we operate. While increasing, increasing the efficiency of our decision-making processes along the way, and having better, uh, better use and allocation of our resources, working with other actuarial organizations, particularly actuarial organizations, and identifying mutually beneficial uh, stakeholder objectives. Mike, I'm turn it over to you for a minute. Thank you. Um, now, before we get into the meat of the presentation, I'd like to make sure we're all grounded in the SOA's current mission and vision. Our mission is who we are today and describes our promise to members, to candidates, to employers, and the public we serve. And our mission is, through education and research, the SOA advances actuaries as leaders in the measurement and management of risk to improve financial outcomes for individuals, organizations, and the public. Now, education and research have been, and will always be, the heart of the SOA. We serve stakeholders by providing high quality and relevant education and research. Our mission reaffirms our ongoing commitment to providing our members with the resources they need to be industry leaders in managing risk and improving financial futures. Now, our vision, uh, while our mission tells us who we are today, our vision tells us what we want to be in the future. Actuaries are highly sought after professionals who develop and communicate solutions for complex financial issues. Now in developing our new strategic plan, the planning committee task force heard many times that we must help actuaries invest in their future. In a fast-paced global economy driven by data, the, the way we work must evolve so that we can develop and more importantly communicate solutions for complex financial issues. It's our responsibility to ensure that actuaries develop the skills to be able to leverage new techniques and use new and traditional methods so they are recognized as assets by our stakeholders, particularly employers. We want the actuary, driven by society's programs, to be viewed as a leader who solves complex problems and is an indispensable part of the team. <clears throat> Now that you've seen uh, the SOA's intent with our strategy, we'll move along to talk about some pressing topics that I know you're interested in hearing about today. To begin with, I want to emphasize that the SOA is a global organization that provides members with globally recognized credential. This credential indicates to employers, regulators, and the public that members have demonstrated a deep foundational knowledge of actuarial science that really transcends national borders. Given today's global economy, the SOA is committed to providing all of our members and, and with relevant insights into the international marketplace and the knowledge and skills they need to manage and measure global risk. We provide specific support to non-North American members as well, with locally tailored content to meet the needs so that they can solve problems in their current markets. Providing best-in-class education and training for our candidates and members is essential to, this, to the success of the actual profession in our members' careers. We do audit our, and evolve our education offerings regularly to ensure that they are meeting the needs of our members and the stakeholders that they serve. As such, as most of you know, we have increased or we have revised our ASA curriculum to include predictive analytics and to have a better balance between the mathematics of long-term and short-term insurance coverages. The curriculum includes two additional uh, formally tested subjects, primarily related to predictive analytics, which will bring the number of, of components to attain ASA from 10 to 12. The changes address continuing industry uh, evolving needs, as well as new educational technologies available, and incorporate subject matter, particularly new subject matter, particularly on predictive analytics. The predictive analytics in the current curriculum may include generalized linear models, decision trees, clustering techniques, and principal components analysis. The assessment tests will be a project base, which, project base, which will really give candidates an opportunity to demonstrate their, their proficiency with the skills and knowledge. The curriculum changes will have no uh, impact on your designation requirements if you attain ASA by July 1, 2018, and your fellowship by July 1, 2022. 
do want to make sure you know that the implementation of changes to our ASA exams, P and FM, which we previously announced, will be delayed by one exam cycle. To really do accommodate the, um, the procedures used by Prometric, our outside uh, vendor for testing. Uh, the first exam, P, under the new ASA curriculum, will be given in September 2018. And the first uh, exam, FM, under the new curriculum, will be given in October 2018. Neither of these changes impacts our transition rules because you need to be an ASA by July 1, 2018 to, um, to avoid the predictive analytics requirements. Mike? Yeah, next up is predictive analytics. We have some exciting updates to share with you regarding the work we've done with predictive analytics and expanding opportunities for actuaries. To start, for those of you who don't know, the SOA established a predictive analytics pilot certificate program that will provide practical instruction, soft skill integration, and a level of rigor consistent with the current SOA credentials. The pilot program consists of online learning with six e-learning modules and an in-person two-day seminar. Participants who complete the rigorous project-based assessment will receive a certificate of completion from the SOA. The pilot program was conducted over five months. 30 FSAs with a variety of expertise were selected to participate in this pilot certificate program. Based on the pilot program's findings, the SOA's Professional Development Committee will make a recommendation to the SOA board about creating a permanent certificate program in predictive analytics. I encourage you all to go to our website where you will find details of the changes made to both our ASA curriculum and to the predictive analytics certificate program. We also launched our first ever predictive analytics symposium, which took place recently in Chicago on September 14 and 15. The symposium included a mix of sessions that were designed for everyone from the seasoned expert interested in leading techniques to someone just beginning to learn what predictive analytics has to offer. Finally, I want to update you on the predictive analytics internship program we launched in the summer of 2015. The objective of the program is to demonstrate to employers that the knowledge interns have gained through the actual education and the SOA credentialing examinations is applicable in non-traditional roles in a neighboring profession. Since 2015, the SOA has placed 21 actuaries in non-traditional roles, both in non-traditional and traditional companies. Since we started the intern program, four of these interns have been hired as full-time employees. You ask what's the future? We will be continuing the intern program next year, and we'll be sure to keep you all updated on our progress with placing actuaries in non-traditional predictive analytics roles. Now, related to predictive analytics work, I want to make sure you're all aware of the Kaggle competition that several of our members participated in this summer. The objective of the program was to increase awareness and credibility of the actuaries as predictive modelers based on participation and performance in the Kaggle competitions. The SOA encouraged actuaries to enter as individuals or form groups to participate in the Kaggle competition. How? By publicizing relevant competitions and by offering SOA-sponsored prize money, which was separate from the Kaggle. SOA members did participate as individuals or as part of groups. In total, 64 entries were submitted during this competition period. The SOA will announce the winners of the 2017 annual meeting before the end of the year. The SOA will uh, also be announcing its participation in the Kaggle again for 2018, and we encourage all interested and eligible members to sign up and participate. You can go to SOA.org to find more about the competition and how to enter. <clears throat> As part of our 2017 to 2021 strategic plan, the SOA is committed to identifying and acting upon trends important to the SOA and the actual profession faster and more efficient than we have in years past. The world is changing very fast, and we know that as an organization, we need to pr improve our environmental scanning so that we can capture emerging issues on a timely basis and identify appropriate actions so that we can uh, take advantage of them or, or, or address them. 
by enhancing our environmental scanning and decision-making processes, we'll be better able to identify uh, responses to emerging issues to ensure we capture all opportunities that will strengthen the SOA and the actuary's reputation generally. For example, with InsureTech, which is the use of technological innovations to create efficient insurance models, that's a trend that the SOA board has studied, and more work will be done on this in the coming year. Okay, I'll move on to additional updates. Um, as many of you know, we had to unfortunately cancel the Valuation Actuary Symposium in San Antonio this year, or last, year, last month, due to the devastating effect of Hurricane Harvey. To make sure that our members get their professional development credits for the, sympo the symposium, we're adding a day-long seminar at the end of this year's annual meeting that members can attend and get their credits. We also wanted to let you know about some changes we made to our section participation. The SOA will be offering special discounts on webcasts to sponsoring section members to encourage section participation. Finally, we're looking forward to seeing many of you at this year's SOA annual meeting in Boston, which will take place starting October 15 through October 18. Registration is currently open. And congratulations to all our newly elected SOA board members who were announced earlier this month and also to Jim Glickman, who will serve as our 2017 to 2018 SOA president-elect starting in October after the annual meeting. And now I'd like to open up a conversation. I know we've covered quite a lot of material in a short period of time, but there's probably more you'd like to hear about. So let's open up to, to um, the discussion and to answer your questions. Again, you can type them in the dialog boxes on your computer, and uh, Pat Gould, uh, SOA's Marketing Director and Managing of Communications, will ask the questions of Mike and I. Pat? Very good. Thanks, Jerry. I want to start with um, going back to the discussion that, uh, that Mike kicked off about the SOA's mission, and we say that, um, that the SOA advances actuaries as leaders in measuring and managing risk to improve financial outcomes. So a question came in as to um, why the word improve outcomes as opposed to just present outcomes. Wondered if you had some thoughts on that. Well, I think um, it is our, it is our uh, mission to improve outcomes. We don't want to just, uh, what was the other word there, Pat, uh, observe? Uh, present. Present outcomes. No, I think we want to um, make decisions that improve the outcomes for individuals, either through um, better products, better pricing, better design of things, uh, addressing needs, um, that sort of thing. I don't know, Mike, do you want to yeah, add anything uh, to you know, one could present results if one were a technician or a number cruncher, but we've, we see actuaries as subject matter experts. And as subject matter experts, we, we, we can go a bit beyond. We can advise, and by advising, you know, the outcomes and, and, and what the consequences are, uh, we'll, we'll better arm our audiences to, to make better decisions. That's why we have the word improve in that uh, uh, mission statement. We certainly want actuaries to be able to present solutions as well, but, but I think it's just key that we're presenting improved uh, improvements to, to better decisions. Great. Let's talk a little bit more about predictive analytics. Uh, we, we certainly did a bit in the presentation. Um, Mike mentioned the, the new predictive analytics symposium, which was, um, it was in its inaugural year, for, or the, the latest of our um, our major meetings. Jerry, I know that you had an opportunity yeah. to attend. Wondered if you had some, some comments, some thoughts on, on how you think that went. Yeah, we, I really was fortunate to be able to attend uh, the Predictive Analytics Symposium, uh, our, our first ever meeting on the, devoted exclusively to the subject. And we had close to 250 uh, 50 participants there. And I'll tell you, I got a lot of excitement from people in the room. I got um, a, a great deal of positive feedback. I mean, I know I'm president. People aren't going to give you necessarily negative feedback. But I got very positive uh, uh, on, on, the, on the presentations, on the sessions. Um, one person suggested, I, I wish this were over more days so that I could have sat in on, most, on more presentations. There were a lot of time slots that had several things that I would have liked to have heard. Um, I went to several of the presentations myself. I'm not a predictive analytics expert, and I truly got a lot out of it. Um, I enjoyed the meeting. Um, I'm sure we'll do it again next year. I think we'll even have a, a bigger crowd. Um, but it was a, I thought it was a really positive event and a really just great addition to our, our um, collection, of, particularly for our larger meetings. So beyond um, the, the symposium and the other 
activities that, that Mike talked about in, in predictive analytics that we're, um, that we're involved in. We had a member ask, are there going to be additional investments in predictive analytics by the SOA? And if so, what, what those might look like? Yeah, let me take a, a couple of ways to answer that, Pat. Um, we, uh, we, our board, you know, we launched um, the predictive analytics certificate program as a pilot this year. Um, I believe the, the professional development committee will be coming back with a recommendation to continue that and to probably repeat it a couple of times next year. So we'll probably have a couple of, uh, I'm hoping the board will approve, um, we'll continue the certificate program next year. We do have, uh, making an effort to put predictive analytics content in all of our major meetings. Um, so I think you're, you'll have opportunities there. I think you'll see more more seminars. We had a seminar, I believe it was health-focused predictive analytics. Um, also in, in September, I, th I think we've had a few other that are you know, smaller, uh, more focused topics. But um, I, I just think we're going to be doing more and more. And then with what we're adding it to the, to the ASA curriculum, you're going to see more uh, new ASAs with better training in predictive analytics. I think that's going to make an Im impact going forward as well. Do you want to, yeah, I, I to? think we, we, we're, oh, I was going to say, I think we're trying to cover the whole waterfront here. And for for entry-level students thinking about actual career, we have the Kaggle competition. For those wishing to become ASAs on their track to ASA, we have the Predictive Analytics ASA curriculum. Uh, for seasoned fellows, uh, as Jerry said, we're thinking about uh, making the certificate program permanent. Uh, and uh, we have these at annual meetings and, uh, and specialty meetings. So. Um, I'm sure if people have other ideas, let us know. But uh, I, I think we're pretty open to, uh, uh, to encouraging uh, learnings in predictive analytics and uh, keeping current. The one thing I might add on the predictive analytics symposium is we really offered three tracks. We had a track for advanced practitioners. We had a track for kind of novice and intermediate in be the beginner area, as well as um, a track for those that are managing and supervising uh, people that are doing that work. So um, you don't need to be a predictive analytics expert to get a lot out of the meeting. If you are a predictive analytics expert, you still can get a lot out of the meeting. If you're supervising those people, um, you can as well. So I, I think the meeting had a great format for appealing to a, a large, uh, a wide variety of backgrounds in predictive analytics. So we're, we're clearly doing a lot in predictive analytics. We identified that as, a, as an emerging opportunity. What might be the next forefront that we're gonna, that we're gonna see, the next big opportunity? Anything that, that you two are keeping an eye on? You know, I think it's going to be things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, which are kind of along the same line as predictive analytics. Um, I think as as uh, machine learning comes and and sort of does some of the some of the entry level actuarial work, um, that there'll be opportunities for more senior actuaries to to kind of oversee and supervise how those computers are doing that work. So I I think there's going to be a lot in that general workspace um, around it. But again, it's still in the predictive analytics areas. I don't have a good enough crystal ball to tell you what the next what the next mm -hmm. big thing is, but um, but maybe Mike does. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we do have an issues advisory committee that uh, that helps us look at uh, what's coming down the road. So one thing that we're uh, keeping a, an eye on is InsureTech. Uh, which is a little bit different from predictive analytics, but it, it operates in the same space. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, uh, we're aware of what the, uh, the threats or opportunities are with respect to insure tech. And uh, so we're keeping a careful watch on that. So there's been a lot of attention paid, as, as I'm sure you know, to the, um, to the issues that Equifax has had with, with some of its um, data. Is that something that, that that's sort of a, um, a problem is that something that actuaries need to be thinking about in a in a different way than perhaps they have in the past. I, I think that a, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities for for actuaries in the whole um, cyber risk space. It's it's probably a bigger um, bigger opportunity for in, in in property casualty where where I think that coverage lies. Um, but as as companies become more and more exposed, companies like Equifax that you know have very good protection against. Um, against in, in people invading their space were, were still um, had their data breached. Uh, I, I do think there's opportunities. I, I don't know enough about that area specifically, but I, I think there are great insurance opportunities, and that will lead to insurance opportunities for actuaries as well. Sure, you know, my, um, I, I want to make a comment as well here. Um, 
the difference between data scientists and actuaries, uh, and this may get to heart of, of, of your question, Pat, is uh, yes, there are people that can crunch numbers and, and get results, etc. Uh, but there's there's a layer beyond that, and this is becoming more and more of a societal issue that has to do with the the ethics of data, the confidentiality, um, the professionalism, and I think we as a side of actuaries um, build a little bit more into our training that addresses those issues, and uh, I think these are going to become more and more important over time. And I also think we could collaborate with the other actual organizations exactly. on things like ethics surrounding uh, data science issues. Great. Um, Jerry, you talked about the, the updates that we're making to the ASA curriculum right mm -hmm. now. Um, are, are you seeing anything in the, in the horizon on, on other changes that need to be made to, to the curriculum in the future? Well, I think, I think we've announced that we're doing this, but as um, <clears throat> new ASAs will come in with predictive analytics expertise, we will be changing the fellowship exams with, with the understanding that, that they'll have that as a prerequisite. They'll have been through that already. So I think there'll be some changes coming in, in the fellowship exams that recognize we'll have ASAs with more, more, more knowledge in that area than, than they have in the past. So I think we'll see those coming. Um, in terms of other changes, uh, I'm not aware of anything we're specifically working on other than we're, we're updating all of the fellowship tracks kind of in response to that. I'd say one more thing. Uh, we're, we're also looking at the fact that we're expanding global international organization. And so one of the things we're studying is, uh, are we up to date? Do we need to take another look at um, whether we need to have nation-specific exams with respect to regulation? You know, what about the language issue? Uh, so these are things that uh, we'll be looking at uh, periodically and, uh, and studying. Can you gentlemen talk a little bit about the Certified Actuarial Analyst qualification? Um, we announced that, that we were entering into a joint venture with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries in the UK uh, just, just about a year ago, and would like an, an update on, on that. Sure, Pat. The, um as you noted, the CAA was launched uh, about a year ago as a, as a joint venture between the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries uh, in the UK and, and the SOA. We've seen a, a fairly big increase in, the, in, in exam registrations. Uh, I think it's better than 50% increase this year over last year. I think as a result of the SOA um, joining the joint venture, the IFOA had previously offered these exams on their own. As people complete the exams, which is a series of, of six examinations, uh, the exams currently do not lead to any SOA, and I don't think there's any expectation that they would lead to SOA exam credit. But when they finish the six exams and become a CAA, they then will either join the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries as a CAA member, or they'll join the SOA Center for CAA, which is a uh, a nonprofit corporation we set up for this purpose. And as a member of that, they'll be subject to a code of conduct. They'll be subject to discipline system if they violate that code of conduct. They'll have continuing education requirements. The CAA is really designed for those working in financial services, particularly those working with actuaries, supporting actuaries, to give them a good educational training program to support the actuaries for whom they work. And I, I think it, it would, you know, I know from my own perspective as a ch former chief actuary of a life insurance company, um, it would have been a great benefit for me, for the people that worked for me that were not credentialed actuaries, to have a formal training program they could go through to get some actuarial education to have a better understanding and appreciation of the work they're doing, as well as to be bound to a code of conduct and subject to continuing education requirements. So that would have just added to the professionalism to the work they do. So I see it as a, as a real valuable benefit, um, and I think we'll see, we'll, we'll see more of it going forward as, <coughs> excuse me, as companies support the program in a more meaningful way. And um, we have a, a growing number of CAAs in the US as we do around the world. Very good. Um, we have a member who has identified that there's somewhat of a lack of flexibility for actuaries in insur insurance companies. Um, there are only typically certain roles that they, that they play, certain areas that they can operate in. Is that um, putting the, the profession, is that putting actuaries at a competitive <coughs> disadvantage as, as you look at the global growth and the, the global opportunities? Any thoughts on, on that? I don't know if it's putting actuaries at a, at a disadvantage. Um, 
I don't know, Mike, I'm going to maybe let you take a, a stab at that question. Uh, that, that question puzzled me as well. I'm not sure what they mean by lack of flexibility. Uh, we, we, we provide our, uh, uh, our members and, uh, and our fellows with, with the training they need, and they, they move beyond that with continuing ed, uh, education, et cetera. So uh, I'm struggling a bit to understand the question uh, about limitations of roles. Now, the only one I'm aware of is the, um, the actuaries over time, at least in, in insurance companies, seem to have uh, lost a little bit of ground with respect to the uh, chief financial officer role. Uh, if, there, if that's the, the question, then, yeah, I agree with that, and I'm not sure... Uh, that's something we're addressing at the moment, but uh, I don't know. How about um, the, the idea that, that we talk about a lot of um, actuaries, communication skills, or if you want to use the term soft skills. Employers continue to identify that as, as, as a need in, in some surveys that we've seen and wondered what you think the, the role is for the SOA in addressing that. You know, I, I think it's a it's kind of a three way role. Um, I think it's the individual's responsibility to improve their communication skills. I think the SOA has a role, and I think their employers have a role. Um, we do have uh, soft skills training at many of our uh, sessions, at many of our major meetings. Certainly, as part of the fellowship admissions course, we have a a session on uh, on presentations and an opportunity to actually make a presentation. <coughs> In terms of where the responsibility lies. Again, I think it's shared between the employer and the SOA. But I, and I think a, a lot of employers do have good, good training programs, and I encourage actuaries to take advantage of them where, where they have chances to do so. If you want me to yeah, add please. a comment. Uh, Jerry and I have <laughs> in contact with other actuarial associations, and uh, this is a question that, uh, that, that faces other actuarial organizations as well. And uh, there, there's no one right answer. Um, certainly, the SOA doesn't want to get into the business of, uh, of doing MBA schools or courses or presentation skills. We do what we can, but uh, a lot of it depends on the individual uh, and, uh, and, and the employer. And, and so it, it's a mix, and there's, there's no one model that seems to work yet. Uh, so this is an issue we all face, uh, both as individuals and as, uh, as an actual organization. I'd suggest, and I'd be interested to see if, if you agree, that one way that um, members can certainly enhance their, their skills in those areas is through, for instance, volunteering at the SOA. Um, we had a question as to where the opportunities, you think the most opportunities are to volunteer at the SOA, um, how to get involved, and, and I suppose, you know, from that, what are the benefits of it that you've seen? I'd answer that a couple of ways, Pat. Um, I think a great way to get involved to improve your communication skills is to volunteer to speak at our annual meeting or the Valuation Action Symposium or any of the other um, meetings that we run, as well as local actuarial club meetings. The SOA does have um, a volunteer spot at our website where we have sort of what I guess I'd call a jobs listing of, of what our current volunteer needs are. We might need at any given time uh, question writers for uh, one of our exams, or we might need people to write articles or to speak at meetings. But if you go to, um, I'm not sure the exact website, but it might be soa.org slash volunteer, you'll find um, that job site I'm talking about that, that lists the opportunities. But take a peek at it, look and see if there are some that, that appeal to you. Um, but there are many that, that will give you opportunities to, um, to improve your communication skills. You can get involved with section councils where you can, or section leadership roles uh, that, that, can, that can give you great training and, and great chances to practice your presentation skills. Let's talk a little bit more about um, how actuaries are Kind of perceived. You know, we talked a little bit about employers, but um, you know, Jerry, I know you've you've spent a lot of time, Mike has as well, talking to our employers themselves, others that that are stakeholders of of the work actuaries do. Wonder how you've seen the the perception of actuaries evolve over over time. Yeah, I'm not sure the perception evolves as quickly as the actuaries evolve. I know I, I see. Um, I'm very impressed by the, the caliber of, of new FSAs I see when I meet them at fellowship admissions courses or when I meet them at SOA meetings. I, I think they're just a far more impressive group and far better communication skills than the people that, <coughs> excuse me, that came through as new FSAs with me. Um, I think 
I think it's going to take a long time to overcome the the employer mindset that we're not good communicators. I think it's going to take a, you know even a, a generation of good actual communicators to come through and and people to kind of forget the the, the stereotype that we carry. But I think it'll it'll be something we will make progress with a little bit at a time. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what the SOA has been doing to uh, to study and and to try to improve the diversity within the the profession? We um, we've been working on a research project for almost the last year now. It's it's a joint effort with the Casualty Actuarial Society, the Actuarial Foundation, and the in International Association of Black Actuaries where we hired an outside vendor to um, <clears throat> really identify the barriers to entry for um, particularly African Americans and Latinos. They conducted focus groups, they, they had online discussions, they, they had one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussions with, with, with members of various minorities. And, and I think the one thing that came through loud and clear, and it really wasn't a surprise to us as much, is we need to find out ways to reach to these people much earlier in their, in their career search to identify actuary as a, as a potential role. We need to find these kids, you know, bright, uh, math, math, mathematically oriented kids in high school, rather than just as they're finishing with a, with a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics in, in college and <clears throat> looking at opportunities that, that, that they might find. I think uh, unlike lawyers and accountants and doctors and other better known professions, there are role models that, that kids can follow and they and their their greater awareness of these professions. We're a little smaller and quieter profession and and not as well known. And I think we need to find ways to get into into high schools and reach these kids. We we are going to be sponsoring a, a Canadian mathematics Olympiad that will reach out to, you know. Uh, mathematically oriented kids in Canada in, in the coming year. That might be a, one way we could begin to make some inroads, but I, I, I think there's other things we can be doing, but it's all in, in, evolved around outreach of getting to, to these kids quicker. Um, the research project is not yet finished, but our Inclusion and Diversity Committee will be looking at the results. We'll be working with the Joint Committee on Career Encouragement and, and Actual Diversity, and JCCEAD. <coughs> To, um, to implement some of, the, some of the findings that come out of, of the research. So I think there'll be some initiatives coming forward that, that, that will be positive in this area. Jerry, as you, um, you know, come close to wrapping up your year as president, Mike, as you begin yours, Jerry, any thoughts on, on what you're, you're most proud of, of having accomplished in your year, where you see things going forward? And the, and the same for you, Mike, kind of where you see um, you know the, the the next year going under under in your presidency. I guess a couple areas I'd like to comment, Pat. Um, one of the things that I, I I made a commitment to when I ran for president elect two years ago was to really improve our relationships with the other actual organizations, um, particularly with the CIA, with the CAS, and the American Academy of Actuaries. And I think we've made a tremendous amount of progress with each of those groups. Uh, we signed a memorandum of un understanding with the CIA earlier this year that really identifies in, uh, our, our education relationship with the CIA. It was very well received by the, the CIA. It, it's, it's a great thing for the SOA. Um, so, so I'm very proud of that. The, the relationships we have with the CAS are, are much better. I have regular conversations with my counterparts at, at both the, the CAS and the Academy, and the CIA as well, for that matter. Um, so I think we've made great strides. I think it's been a good thing for the profession. I, I know Mike's committed to continuing that same effort, and, and, and yeah, I think you'll see more and better there in, in the future. I'm also really pleased by what we've done in predictive analytics. Um, the inaugural symposium with almost 250 people at it, our certificate program up and running, our uh, ASA changes, well, we, we, we came to those probably a year ago. There's been an enormous amount of work going to figuring out how exactly we'll do those assessments, how we'll develop the content, how we'll deliver that content. So we've done an awful lot in predictive analytics and I'm, and I'm really pleased with, with the effort there. Uh, the certificate program as well. So again, just rounding out quite a bit of educational offerings in the um, with predictive analytics. So I'm, I think those are the things that I, that I look back and with the, with the most pride on. 
right? Well, as for myself, uh, in addition to participating in all the uh, activities that uh, Jerry has done and also learning the ropes, uh, so to speak, of uh, what the president-elect uh, needs to do to become uh, take over as president later on, uh, my focus, uh, of course, I haven't started yet, but my focus would, uh, would be primarily in uh, two or three areas. One is continuing the cooperation with other actuarial organizations. Uh, the other one is to take, uh, take a good look and focus on our international strategy. Um, we, we are a, a global firm, a global actuarial organization, uh, but the way we serve our members in different pockets uh, is, is not uniform. So I wanna, I wanna take another look at uh, uh, the service we provide for members and, uh, and what we're getting back and make sure that uh, we get the, the, uh, the engagement that we need uh, from the members uh, across the board, uh, be it practice area, be it geography, uh, whatever it be, old fellows, new fellows, uh, ASAs, et cetera. And then the third area I would look at is the relevance uh, of actuaries. That's always important. How do we maintain that relevance? How do we look at uh, increasing opportunities for actuaries? How do we deal with threats? Uh, and what's our reaction to that? So that's what I would focus on in the coming year. Well, I think that's um, a great way to wrap it up um, today. Um, I, speaking for, um, I'm sure for the members, I thank you for, um, for your participation today. And Jerry, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thanks, Pat. Uh, I really want to thank uh, all of you for, for listening in, for the great questions, for the comments. Um, again, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Mike or myself if you've got uh, questions you'd like. Uh, we're, we're very available. You can also go to SOA.org for more resources. And with that, I'll say thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day wherever you may be. Thank you.